Salutations, my friends. Hello, my name is Maria. This is Love, Pray, Paint. And today we are going to learn how to paint the perfect portrait. I'm going to give you top seven tips to paint the perfect portrait. So my number one tip is to print out a photocopy of the person or animal that you are going to be painting and you are going to take some tracing paper and you can buy this anywhere at Michael's or at Hobby Lobby. Um, you can also use parchment paper but it's way hard to see through. And so you're going to put that over the photocopy. You're going to trace and outline all of the details of the hair, the eyes, the nose, the face shape. Um, I would refrain from trying to trace the shadowing and everything because that's just gonna make it too complicated. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get either transfer paper or you're going to get um, carbon paper. You can also get that from Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Amazon or wherever you wanna order it from. And you're gonna take your canvas and look, see, I have this, I cut off half of it because I messed up, but um, this is just an example. You can trace it, and then you take your, your carbon paper or your tracing paper, and you put it on whatever, you know, whatever you're gonna be painting it on. I have this weird thing for painting on vinyl records. Anyway, um, and you just trace over what you did, and it will transfer it onto your canvas for you. And this is going to help you get the correct dimensions every single time you do a portrait and it will turn out beautiful. No, it is not cheating because you still have to paint it and you still have to do all of the shading and all of the, the you know, the skin tones. Um, another tip is, it's sort of in the same vein, um, but a little more advanced. I don't have one of these myself but you can get an easy tracer or um, it's like an overhead projector for artists. And if you're doing a really big, um, on big canvas, a big portrait, you can do the same exact thing using the um, projector. Anyway, so that is my number one tip. And my second tip is using a grid system. So what you can do is on the actual photo, um, itself there are like apps that do this or you can use um, Photoshop I believe to do this you just do like the rule of thirds type of grid system and then what you're going to do is after you have that you print it out and then you also follow the same measurements onto your canvas using the same grid system so you're going to take a ruler and you're going to trace that out onto your canvas um, I'll show an example, a couple of pictures of what I mean by that, um, so you understand what I'm saying. And that's also going to help you get the perfect proportion and where the placement of everything is. That's actually a good idea to do no matter what painting you're doing. Um, I used to do that, I don't really do that so much anymore, just because I guess I've trained my eye through painting for a long time. Um, but if you're a beginner painter, that's super helpful. Okay, so my number three tip is to print out a photocopy in black and white. Even if you're doing a colored um, portrait, have two copies. One, um, you know, the color form, regular color, and then the other one in black and white. Now what this is going to do is it's going to help you with your shading and seeing the value of the color. What this is going to do is it's going to make you concentrate on elements such as composition, lighting, and form. Um, it trains your eye to see those things. So this is something I like to do every single time I do a portrait. I will print out both white and black and white and also just practicing painting in those values in black and white um, will also help you um, train your eye to see those things as well. Okay, my number four tip is to paint directly onto the photocopy to check the skin tone. Um, and what I mean by that is not actually 
painting over this, like you wouldn't just paint over this. What you're going to do is, let's say I had a color copy of a photo like this, and I was checking to see if, you know, my skin tone, whatever I mixed, was matching it directly. I would just paint directly onto this. Obviously, if it was a real photograph, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, but, you know, I would see that it was matching like that. You can see that I, I've done that a couple times on here just to make sure you have the perfect shade. Um, it's really helpful in, in matching it because you will match it exactly. Um, so that's my number four tip. Okay, so my number five tip is to use blending brushes. Uh, the two that I use the most um, uh, is a mop brush and is a scrumbler brush. Uh, these are both by Artist Love. I got them at Michael's. Uh, you can use, they make smaller or bigger. Um, if you're working on a bigger painting, this obviously is great. If you're working on a smaller area, this is good. I am gonna be getting one of these in a smaller size just so I can do smaller portraits like this because I love the way this blends. I like the way this one blends too, but I like this one more. Um, anyway, uh, these are really great to help get an airbrush effect so you don't have any brush marks and when you're doing portrait work to me this is how I like mine this you know some people really like a lot of texture on their paintings I think that it gives a more realistic effect if it looks really smooth um but that's just or, and like it you know it photographs better and everything so that's just what I like I don't really like a lot of texture um in my paintings but that's just my opinion. Um, anyway, so these are um, my best friends for portrait painting. So my number six tip is to go onto Pinterest and look for skin tone color mixing recipes for acrylic painting if you're an acrylic painter. Um, so you can find hundreds of these and people make their own little kind of like recipe books on there for like cool undertones or warm undertones and you will just find the most amazing things on there to help you determine what colors to mix together to get the perfect skin tone and get the undertones and everything correct. Um, I use it all the time when I'm doing portraits. I think it really helps you in the process and if you don't know how to mix things correctly or how to get the perfect undertone. Um, or how to get cool tones or warm tones and which ones to mix together because I don't always know that. I don't always, I can't always just like look at the picture and say, well, you know, I'm good at determining warm or cool tones, but sometimes I'm like, well, how do I get that? How do I, what and what do I mix together to get that like peachy whatever shade or that nice dark warm shade or that beautiful olive undertone um, that can be a really difficult thing to do. So I think that's a really great thing. If I, um, I'll search and try to find some and link them below. Um, my number seven tip is to slow down. A lot of the time when we're painting, we say, oh, I only have an hour to paint. Well, if you only have an hour to paint, you're probably not going to be able to, well, if you're an expert, you probably can do an entire portrait in an hour or five. I, myself, I need a long um, period of time to perfect everything. And especially if you're trying to do a more realistic painting, you need to be patient. You need to, um, you know, break it up too. Like I, I'm the type where I'll spend like 10 hours on a painting and I'll paint all day, but sometimes your best work doesn't come out of that. Sometimes it looks a lot better if you just do it in increments. Let's say like your timing, that's my tip, is really your timing and how you time things out. Like give yourself an hour on this day, an hour on this day, an hour on this day you know, and, and just be patient with the process. So you'll enjoy it a lot more if you're not rushing yourself. My dog is licking my knee right now and it's making me very uncomfortable. And um, my bonus tip, so I'm gonna give you an extra tip, uh, number eight, is be kind to yourself. Portrait painting is, to me, the hardest type of painting. It takes years and years to build up your skills to become a good portrait painter. I still don't consider myself a good portrait painter. I have a lot to learn till I get really great at it. And you know, I would love to be able to do um, more realistic 
type of portrait painting, but I know that's going to take a really long time for me to get there. And you just have to be kind to yourself. Stan, this stuff isn't going to come overnight. It's going to take years and years of practice. There are so many portraits of mine where I've overpainted it, I haven't been satisfied with the outcome, I was rushing during it, I was putting lots of pressure on myself for it to be perfect. Um, it's not always going to be perfect, even if you have years of practice. If you get the wrong dimension or the wrong shading, it can throw the entire painting off. But you just have to remember that you can always paint over it, you can always rework it, it can always become better. Um, so that's my final tip, is to just be patient and be kind to yourself while you're doing these really difficult portrait paintings. Um, so I hope you enjoyed these tips and learned something new, and um, I will see you next week. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye!